and it's better to have a modified circuit which can be analyzed more easily. In the modified circuit, we are more interested in knowing the RC circuit in series and parallel because that will actually govern the behavior of this particular circuit. So if we basically just uh, consider, uh, um, if we just consider this RC circuit, one is basically a high pass filter and the other part is a low pass filter, something which I have already explained to you. And uh, what we see that if the Barkerson criteria needs to be satisfied, the resonant frequency, the phase shift must be equal to zero. Okay, and that resonant frequency that should be there is this. Okay, this is something which you want to find out. Okay. And of course, if we look into the output by input, that is beta value, it is one by three. So this is also something which we are going to derive. So if beta is one by three, A would be three, and that would be actually nothing but the condition for first thing. And uh, we are actually connecting this to RC circuit to the non-inverting terminal. Also, if it is connected to the non-inverting terminal, the gain of the op-amp is also observed to be nothing but 1 plus R4 divided by R3. So that means if A needs to be 3, this value of R4 and R3 must be equal to 2. This must be equal to 2. So this is what we have explained in the next graph. Okay. And if we assume a value of frequency, say that the resistances are equal and the capacitors are equal, we can actually find out what is the value of this. Okay. And based on this, we can actually do slight kind of tuning using a potential meter. We can also decide what is the value of R4 by an R3. Okay. So it's not that R4 and R3 should be 20 kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm. Okay. Uh, it might be around 30 kilo ohm and then this might be around 15 kilo ohm so that will be the again 2. So the ratio between R4 and R3 should be 2 and that is one the balancing condition. And this is exactly based on what actually a potential vector or sorry a wind bridge also works. Okay. So uh, what we are going to do today is we are actually going to derive. Okay. So we are actually going to go for some derivation. So what are the things that we are going to derive today? Okay. Just write down this. So derivation is important, okay, and this will be actually falling apart. Descriptive question. So the process of deriving this, okay, F is equal to one divided by okay, one divided by two pi R C, and that's of course if R one and R two are equal. Okay, this is something which we are going to derive, okay, and in the process we are also going to see that uh, V not divided by V in, okay, which is equal to nothing but beta is going to be two and three to be here. So this is this one. It is one by three. So it's not three. It's one by three. So it's beta. Beta is always less than one. Okay. So these two things we are actually going to derive. Okay. But then before that, maybe if we just do the uh, circuit of the past. Okay. What we have here is uh, capacitor okay. and uh, that is P1 okay. and then we actually have got a resistor here and that is R1 and then here we actually have the capacitor C2 and R2 which are connected in parallel. Okay. So they are actually connected in parallel to so this is our circuit which we already know okay, and that is R2 and this is the output okay and we will use the voltage divider rule and the other rules okay and this is your input across this and you are actually going to get the input. So you see this C1 and R1 since this is not a pure resistive circuit this C1 will actually offer uh, impedance okay, or reactance the total reactance would be nothing but impedance etc. and for this the total impedance would be nothing but z. Okay. So I think all of you know this. When we talk about uh, impedance, it means that we have the reactances of the circuit along with the resistances, everything considered together. And that is something which we actually call as the impedance. Okay. So let's just keep this in mind. Okay. And keeping this in mind, we can actually start our calculation. Okay. So in general, uh, if we actually start with the derivation, so we have to just write down two something. Okay. So I will just uh, 
and we are actually going to derive it from okay. so impedance for series R2 we have got the series R2 and for series R2 it's Z and then we have got impedance for parallel R2 so parallel R2 so that's it okay and uh, so if we just consider the RC network, okay, if we just generally consider the RC network, we can actually find out the output voltage very easily using the voltage divider rule. So basically for the RC network, okay, what happens is that output voltage, okay, that output voltage that we have. Okay, so everything is derivation here. So I suggest all of you just keep writing and do, I try to understand this. So output voltage is V0, okay, and this voltage is actually taken across this particular impedance that is Z2, okay. So this will actually using the voltage divider rule, this will be Z2 divided by the total impedance that is Z1 plus Z2, okay, and then we have got the input, that is V0, okay. Now the question is, uh, I have to find what is Z2 and what is Z1, okay, so that's the so what we do is for Z2, you can see that this R2 okay, is parallel. Now this is actually parallel to the reactance of the circuit of C2. So the reactance of the circuit is 1 divided by J omega C2. That's the reactance of the circuit. Okay. Now uh, we can actually do the calculation separately and let me do it anyway because I think if I do it, it will be a bit easier to you. So you know this uh, Z and R, sorry R and C both are actually connected in parallel. So if you want to find out the total impedance, that means if it's a parallel circuit, we know that the reciprocal of the impedance is equal to the reciprocal of the reactance. So it is 1 by R2 plus 1 divided by whatever reactance is given by C2. So C2 has a reactance of 1 divided by J omega. So if we just uh, simplify this, okay, you know this would be remaining as 1 divided by R2, okay, and plus, and this will just go on top, okay, so this is J omega C2, okay, so you know it's quite simple here, no? this is R2, okay, and this is 1 divided by J omega R2 C2, okay, R2 C2. So what we need is Z2, so I will just take Z2 to be nothing but uh, R2, okay, divided by 1 plus J omega R2, okay. So this is something which we have already, Z2, okay. So now we know what is our Z2, okay. Now what we need is Z1, okay. So let's find out Z1 now also, okay, Z1. Now Z1 is series, okay. We have got C1 and R1 in series. So I will take the reactance is uh, reactance C1, so it is R1 plus 1 divided by J omega C1, right? So if you just uh, simplify this, okay, you can get your result. But then uh, let's not do it now, okay? Let me just mark this as number 1 and mark this as number 2. What is our aim? Our aim is to find out beta, okay? And in the process, we are going to find out what is F. So beta is nothing but V naught divided by V in, so we can actually take it from here, okay. So what we can do is therefore V naught divided by V in, okay. So V naught divided by V in is actually nothing but uh, Z2 divided by Z1, okay. So see, this is something which you have to practice, okay. I am writing this because it's all mechanical, okay. The process follows very simply. So it is Z2 on top, so I just take 1 plus J omega R2 C2, okay, and then I divide this, and this would be 1, oh, sorry, R1, Z1 uh, plus Z2, so Z1 is R1 plus 1 divided by J omega C1 plus R2 divided by 1 plus J omega R2. So what I will suggest all of you to is actually work on this and simplify it, okay. And once you simplify, you are actually going to get, because this is very simple, okay, it's quite trivial. So 
you have to just simplify this okay so after simplification this is just a circuit analysis that's all it should not be very complicated for you so after simplification okay you are going to get it as this something like this okay this form is something which we are looking for right now v not divided by v in okay is equal to and on the top we have we have got v omega i suggest all of you to please check it okay r2 c1 okay this is something which you will get on top of it and at the numerator uh, at the denominator you are just going to get 1 minus omega square okay r1 r2 c1 c2 okay plus v omega okay you can just simplify on your own and you can get the result but you can just keep this result written somewhere in a copy so that you can put it later r1 c1 plus r2 c2 okay plus r2 c1 so that's the simplified form okay now you know if we look into the barkesson criteria this phase difference must be zero okay between the output and the input okay so if we consider this okay this particular part must be equivalent to zero okay there is no phase difference because if this is zero this j omega and this j omega will also get cancelled out and we will actually have a pure form of the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage no phase term involved okay there will be no phase term involved okay so this should be zero why phase shift that resonance frequency is zero this is the condition which we already know okay so phase shift at resonance frequency is equal to zero so that's the reason that this should part should become zero okay so if this part becomes a zero you can see that 1 minus omega square okay r1 r2 c1 c2 must be equal to zero okay and if this is zero i can easily find out what is the frequency and that is the resonant frequency because this is the condition at resonant frequency we have the frequency term involved here so we can easily find out what is the frequency so if i just take omega square i can simply write it down one will go on other side minus minus will get cancelled and this will be one divided by r1 r2 c1 c2 right and omega is equal to nothing but 2 pi f okay so we can just simply write it down as f okay square rather okay is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi R1, R2, C1, right? So whatever we know, we are just using that. Okay. Or may I equal to two pi? Okay. Just replace that. That's all. Okay. And once this is done, okay. Once this is done, we can actually get our final form, whatever we have set it to. So that means the frequency, which we actually call it the resonant frequency, is equal to one divided by C5, okay. R1, R2, C1, C2. Okay. There, so we put a root here. Okay. And that's it. That's one part of the derivation. So you know, if I ask you a question, I can ask you in parts, or I might ask you just to derive this for a wind bridge oscillator using an open. So this will be one part. Okay. The second part, why v not by v uh, in is equal to one by three, can be done by using this particular relation. Right? So let's take this relation. So let me mark this as let's say a relation a. Okay. So maybe we can just take one to the. So from a. Okay. See, I am trying to write everything in a very clear cut way so that you are not confused. Okay. So I would suggest all of you to also do it. Here also one more thing we can do also. Maybe I can just change it here only. Also, if R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2, okay, then what happens? We can just find out the resonance frequency. It is 
1 by so r1 r2 will be r square and t1 is equal to c2 is equal to c c square so 1 by 2 by r2 so that's quite obvious but we will one more thing which we might be asked to derive so this is also So from this relation A, the other part is actually zero, right? The other part is zero. So what we can see is that uh, whatever is left is there. V not divided by V n, okay, is equal to R two C one, okay, divided by R one C one plus R two C two okay, plus R two C one. Okay, so now what happens is if I just consider R one and R two to be equal, R one is equal to R two and C one is equal to C two. We can simply say this as R C divided by see this will be R C, this will be R C, this will be R C. So it will be nothing but three times it is one divided by okay. so you can see therefore someone's uh, mic is on I'll request you to please keep it in your mm -hmm. and divided by I okay. and uh, then this is quite obvious okay then if we say that a beta must be equal to 1 okay that's the condition of sustained oscillation therefore a must be equal to 0 right so beta is equal to 1 okay. so you know this is the condition that actually needs to be satisfied or understood but then it's not always mandatory that r1 r2 c1 c2 should be equal okay so we can also write it down in a different way so a is equal to 1 by beta okay you can write it down as 1 by beta right because you know a is 3 beta is 1 by 3 so if I write down 1 divided by 1 by 3 it will be 3 right so a is 1 by beta from here also you can say this is equal to 1 by beta so I can take this so 1 by beta is actually nothing but uh, v in by v naught it's all mathematical analysis so if you just take this this would be nothing but r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r2 c1 that's it right and then at the bottom it will be r2 c1 so if we just uh, separate out all the numerators okay this r1 and r2 will be there c1 and c1 will get cancelled so this will be simply r1 divided by r2 so you know i can just directly give you a question and give you this final relation to be derived so this is something which I expect that you should understand and do it, okay? Divided by C1, okay? Plus this is R2 C1, R2 C1 will get cancelled, so it will get one, okay? So this is also a relation which can be there, so this might be asked. I've given you all the possible forms. Now one more point here is, we say that A is equal to one plus R4 by R3. Now, why A is 1 by R4 by R3? Because this is something which you have learned in open. R4 and R3 are nothing but the input resistor and the feedback resistor of the open. Okay? It is connected with the open directly. So, there are certain conditions based on which actually this will decide the gain factor. Okay, This is something which you have seen in open. Okay, if you can just recall that. So, uh, A should be equal to okay sorry 3 so r4 by r3 must be equal to 2 right so what we can simply write down this as a we can directly put what is a so a is r1 okay by r2 okay plus c2 by c1 plus 1 okay so if you do it this way what we can do is finally we can actually get a form for r4 by r3 so that means can just cancel this out and you can also cancel this out right so if you take this this should be something like this so you know till now we actually have taken one example where we have considered r4 and r3 as uh, 10 kilo ohm and 20 kilo ohm okay 
and now you see that this ratio which we have for r4 and r3 is actually dependent on the value of r1 r2 c1 and c2 so they should also satisfy this particular relation so so many condition needs to be fulfilled for actually getting the sustained oscillation so this is also a condition which we actually see for sustained oscillation condition for sustained oscillation so once we have these conditions fulfilled then only we can actually expect to get the value of uh resonant frequency okay or expect the circuit to actually work for the amplification side okay so as discussed we have seen that if again r1 is equal to r2 and c1 is equal to c2 okay we can simply say that this one this will be one this will be one so it will be two right so this would be r4 by r3 is equal to two so this is i think So, uh, what are the things that we have derived is they are inside the bracket, okay, inside the box. So, you please remember this. Might be asked to derive this. I might ask you to derive this. I might ask you to derive this. And you know, sometimes when I'm doing questions for your exam, uh, it's not that I'll give you. Some, sometimes I don't give it so straightforward. But I might ask you to derive this. I might ask you to derive this, or I might ask you to derive everything. So, if you understand this. Uh, practice it once. I think this should be easy. Okay. So you see, we have not taken uh, much time to do it because you know we already know how to analyze our circuit. Okay. Based on this, we actually done this. Mm -hmm.